Uh, I'm, my name is Aaron Brand. I'm CTRS CTO. I'm uh, a member of the founding team. I've been with the company since uh, we started about uh, 17 years ago. And today I'd like to talk to you about how uh, we are unlocking enterprise intelligence with MCP. Um, and later on, well, we'll take it further and we'll talk about our data intelligence capabilities and, and Gen AI uh, products. Um, so what, what is enterprise intelligence? En enterprise intelligence is, uh, we define it as the ability of, the, uh, of enterprise companies to uh, utilize their data estate uh, and the, the, uh, particularly their most sensitive uh, files and data in order to, to get better decision making, uh, more productivity, and to put this as knowledge in, ha in the hands of their employees. Um, now, uh, when, when uh, you know, the, the, the whole Gen AI space is very new. Uh, and when we started with perhaps maybe uh, only, you know, about two years ago, uh, this entire idea of enterprise uh, Gen AI started, um, we had a problem. And the problem was this NXM problem, or uh, which means that when you wanted to connect uh, enterprise data sources or enterprise applications to Gen AI, you had to build a custom connector for each application, for each Gen AI model. And this is the NXM or N times N problem, right? Uh, and this really doesn't scale. Every, uh, so it's exponential, right? It's exponential complexity, and it's also fragile because uh, if you switch one of the tools, suddenly it stops, stops working. You switch from uh, ChatGPT to Gemini, stops working, right? Everything is, it's not predictable. And there's no, there was no way to provide contextual information to, uh, from the Gen AI model or from the assistants or the agents where the users are, are actually interacting to this backend enterprise system. So th seeing things such as user authentication, okay? Who is the user that's doing the request? And uh, what are their credentials? And what is their group membership? Um, all these things, there was no standard way to provide them. Uh, so this is why the uh, uh, MCP protocol was created. Uh, it's very new. It was created uh, uh, this year. So it's not, uh, it's not something that has a huge history. Uh, and it's, it's still in its uh, evolving, right? Uh, uh, things such as uh, uh, authentication and other, other features are just being added. Uh, and it's not really something that you can say is a table stake. As you know, well, we discussed in the last uh, session, it's really something that uh, is currently cutting edge, at least for the enterprise, right? Perhaps developers use it frequently, but uh, having it in the hands of enterprise users is still new. Um, so MCP provides uh, a few advantages uh, over this, um, uh, uh, hard to say traditional, because nothing is traditional here, right? But uh, this previous uh, NXM architecture, uh, which it provides a seamless integration that is guaranteed to work between any Gen AI model that uh, supports M MCP and any tool that supports MCP. And it's also built to be permission aware and identity aware. So it has a way to pr provide this contextual information about the user, what their permissions are, and uh, to authenticate the users. Uh, and finally, it's, it's, uh, we see it as a future-proof architecture where you can easily uh, swap any component uh, without having to re-architect the entire system. And uh, so at Citera, we, we paid very close attention to this development. Um, and in, in fact, we, we decided we're going all in on MCP. Right? So MCP is a core part of our strategy at, at Citera. And we, we implemented MCP across all of our products. So um, our implementation is in two main layers. The first is what, uh, the implementation in the global file system product, which is uh, where the actual files are stored. You know, we have petabytes or tens of petabytes of data, uh, tens or hundreds of billions of files. Uh, with Citera, uh, uh, all, all you need to do is to enable MCP, and I'll demonstrate this to you in a moment. Uh, and you have your Gen AI agents, assistants, and experts current, uh, suddenly have access to this entire data while respecting the permissions of the user, right? So each user, users can access it from different systems and we'll, we'll see that in a moment. Um, 
the second the second level uh, is data intelligence and this and this is a semantic layer a semantic layer over the data so we're not all talking about the binary representation of these files we're already talking about uh, the textual information, uh, metadata that is extracted from the files, and we expose that using MCP also as part of the second level. Would uh, MCP clients and MP MCP servers fit into this, or is that a, a different way of organizing it? Uh, yeah, uh, so MCP server is the part that's uh, implemented within the enterprise, um, the enterprise application, right? So an uh, MCP server doesn't have to have any AI in it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the MCP, MCP client is the AI tool, right? So um, there are always two, two sides to this. And uh, we have, uh, as part of the global file system, we have an MCP server that allows you to consume it using a, a, any Gen AI uh, MCP client. And the data intelligence tool has both an MCP server and an MCP client. And uh, I'll demonstrate that. Uh, so you mentioned that the global file system was permissions aware. Is the data intelligence also permissions aware? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So um, we ingest all the information, uh, both from uh, our global file system and from other systems, while re uh, indexing all the permissions and respecting them uh, end to end. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a little bit more about um, the the first layer. The, uh, the MCP server that we have in the global file system. Uh, so this allows you to uh, use any MCP tool. It could be Cloud, it could be OpenAI, ChatGPT. They just uh, uh, added MCP very shortly ago, uh, short, a short uh, while ago. And uh, Cursor uh, or any other tool like NA uh, NA10 or other automation tools that support MCP you can uh, uh, connect them to the global file system uh, and, and you can achieve all kinds of tasks. You could, you could have the, your Gen AI system read files, it can enumerate files, it could search for files, it can uh, uh, read a file, summarize it, and write a file back. Uh, it could add metadata, it could create links. So uh, virtually anything that's supported by the platform uh, is wrapped by this MCP interface. Is there any connection at all with CSI, or is that completely orthogonal? Uh, CSI is, is a, a Kubernetes uh, dr CSI driver, and we also have CSI drivers for Kubernetes, but uh, that's it's different. Uh, CSI drivers deal with it; are, they're like drivers for connecting uh, containers to their backend storage, uh, but they don't really deal with uh, all these uh, AI operations, right? Uh, having the under understanding of what Operation this storage system provides that are not not only for storage, right? And uh, reading files, writing files, uh, deleting, creating links. So it's much much more rich, and it's uh, a, a bit uh, you know targeted to a different. Uh, well, there, there are plenty yeah. of other LLMs out there other than the three that you specifically mentioned. Um, Vertex, you know, and, and uh, Llama two, three, five, seven. Mm -hmm. uh, does the MCP? I mean, is MCP only with OpenAI, Claude? And, uh, uh, no, uh, absolutely. absolutely uh, MCP is an absolutely an open standard, so it's not uh, related. It can be work. It can work with any LLM, uh, and uh, there are, there are various implementations for MCP. Or it's more it's more of a front end thing than than a, something related to the LLM. It's related to the the interface, right? To the user interface where you interact. Like the chat interface has to support MCP. Uh, and on the back end, it works using function calling and other, so it has some basic requirements from the LLM, but it's not, uh, spe it, it's not at all uh, specific to any LLM. So I guess I'm, I'm trying to wonder why you're not buying all the 25 other LLMs that are out there, Deep7, whatever. So, uh, my, yeah. my, so my understanding is that not all of them have an MCP client. All of them have an MCP yeah. client. Yes. Uh, the MCP client is part of the user interface, right? So. Uh, if you have a, a chat interface or um, Agent the front end, the front end implements the MCP, right? Not the LLM. The LLM, it, it receives uh, function calls and it, and it handles those things. So, um, this, uh, so Cursor, for example, which is not an LLM at all, has an MCP client, right? But it, it, the Cursor is the user interface on top of the LLM and that implements this uh, agentic flows where it knows how to invoke tools. And so I, I think... So, so it, 
So those were the actually what I mentioned in the last slide. These are use, I mentioned them as user interfaces, not as LLMs. So they're they're front end applications. Um, and, and as I said earlier, we uh, our MCP implementation is fully uh, supports authentication, so it's used OAuth two to allow uh, users to gain access to their uh, uh, data uh, while respecting their permissions. And this is something fairly new in MCP. It's uh, it's um, not all the MCP clients currently support uh, OAuth two, but uh, this is uh, evolving very quickly, and everyone is going to support it soon. Uh, but if you don't, uh, and it's also possible to use tokens uh, in, in case you want to connect not to a user, not to a person, but to a, a, an agent or an automated system, you can use a token. I'm, I'm a little, um, I'm, I'm advising in general a lot of caution mm -hmm. uh, around MCP. Um, they have moved really quickly to address the giant, gaping, huge, dangerous security holes initially in the protocol. So while access control and 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 you know authentication and the, these kinds of bindings um, within uh, the you know the the receiving you know the receiving services uh, system are are important. I feel like those are table stakes that didn't exist to begin with. Do you have a perspective on this? Because there are so many attack vectors that come through, um, through, through AI generally, and then now automating those attack vectors into potentially an entire estate mm -hmm. um, it is, I think, a serious issue. So given Sutera's strength in this area, mm -hmm. um, how do you see customers dealing with that and how are you helping yeah helping with that yeah so that, that's a great question right so of course um you know let's uh, let's imagine a use case right uh, i i want to build uh, an automation using mcp that receives uh, uh um, um you know cvs from people through email and then um updates my hr system right for example well so how, that would be how very, about receiving right? how about receiving patient um test results and uh, like live and right. um, feeding those into some kind of predictive system for better, I don't know, resource allocation. Or something. Uh, so uh, obvi obviously these are, uh, I wouldn't say that these are solved problems, right? This is something that when you implement it, you have to think carefully, right? But, but you know, men mentioning, I, I just wanted to mention the example I, I said earlier, you receive a CV, which is external, and there's some kind of a prompt embedded within the CV that says, okay, Please, uh, please do this and that in the HR system, and we'll just follow and do whatever you want, right? Mm -hmm. so, so that in, in that case, that will that those are the types of uh, problems that we see, and they're not entirely solved. I, I totally agree, and uh, and has to be used carefully in order to. I mean, you you have to provide limited access to the to each uh, use case, right? Uh, even lower than the user level access, and to limit the privileges in order to to have these uh, protections. So I wouldn't say I have I have an answer for you because this is an evolving business, but absolutely we have we we have to caution, caution our customers to to think carefully. And Citera, you can you can do that sort of uh, access control within Citera beyond you know RBAC integration, for example, which may not comprehend that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, um, yeah, so so th those are the type of things that uh, perhaps uh, are, are not a hundred percent. Ready, we're, we're, but we're doing more and more. For example, as part of the OAuth 2, uh, you have the ability to provide cap uh, what capabilities this application requires. And it's not necessarily, right, if you're an administrator, you don't necessarily want to provide your whole capability, right? You want to well, restrict yeah. it to certain. Uh, so, but th that's a great question. And uh, we're, we're constantly thinking about how to help more. And not everything we can do, so some things have to be done on the client side, right? So if you're using, a system like uh, NA10 or other automation platforms, uh, there are some things that have to be done on the client side and we, we're not really able to, to solve completely. Okay, that's fair, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's go into a short demonstration of uh, the MCP server. Um, okay, so all you need to do in order to use the Citera MCP server is to enable it from the Citera portal user interface. 
Okay, so I, I click here, I enable it, and it's uh, probably our easiest feature to enable, right? Uh, and after you enable MCP server, I'm showing here that I'm using it with Claude. Um, and um, I define here a few, uh, some information about the user, so Claude is aware who the user are, okay? So it asks, uh, tell me who, where I work and so on. And I want to show you how I uh, interact with the global file system that this user has access to. Okay, so I have a competitive folder. Can you list the, list the files? So as you see, it's uh, connecting to the global file system, listing all the files. Notice that the competitive is, is with a capital C and not with a small c, and it uh, managed to list the files in the folder. And now I say I want to create an email for my boss about uh, what we should focus on in 2025. Can you read the company, uh, the company files and create this uh, competitive comparison? Okay, so what you see here, Claude is interacting with the file system. It's reading several files. It understands using MCP that it needs to do that. Uh, and it creates a strategic insights document. And now it's writing it back to the global file system. So, um, so you got an end-to-end -end application with, without any code that reads, uh, lists the files, reads them, summarizes them, and writes back the summary. And then it creates an email uh, to my boss that I can send with a link to this file in the global file system and tell me, here, here's, here's our competitive summary. Um, here it is, and he clicks on the link. Uh, right, uh, it creates the link. And here, here, is the, here is the file, uh, here's the email. And you, exactly you, how I write all my emails. <laughs> exactly, using, uh, using uh, Cloud. Cloud. Agent. So, uh, you know, all of us, all of us do that. Um, and, and here, when you click on the link, you get a link that has an access expiration. You can download, the, the, your boss can download the file. Uh, so that's, that's a simple, uh, okay, that's a simple uh, demonstration of um, the MCP server in action. Um, yeah, so any questions? Just a general question. Uh, are you using predominantly Claude? Because I know that's where the MCPs came from. but that versus OpenAI, because I'm playing around here, different mm -hmm. things, trying them both, and I'm, I'm using OpenAI, but I'm thinking Claude is pretty good and might switch over. I'm just curious in general, how you found as a tool within Zotero? Uh, so, so Claude were the first, uh, but uh, ChatGPT actually implemented MCP only within the deep research capability that they have. Uh, and only, yeah, I think it was yesterday or two days ago, they announced that they have MCP as part of their developer developer mode. So they're, they're still a bit uh, lagging. Um, you know, they, they thought uh, they, they would be able to dictate the standard, but uh, the industry decided otherwise. Uh, so they're lagging on this. Uh, but there are a lot, a lot of other vendors, and I think the most powerful integrations are actually with the automation platforms like, like NA10 or other um, uh, where you can, uh, you, your users can build entire automations and tie together different uh, systems, and this is really the power. Um, you know, what I showed in the demonstration is very simple. It's just working with the global file system. But the real power lies, right? Uh, 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 the, re the real power lies where you integrate multiple uh, uh, enterprise systems, the source, the destination, input, and processing layers and conditions, and build. And, and it essentially allows your users to, to, do, to be much more efficient, right? The, um, there are a lot of automations, you know, uh, you can invest in for your users, but sometimes, but you have many different users that are not really worth it to spend, have a developer build an automation that's specific for this guy in finance or how they work. And suddenly we, we democratize this and we allow our users to, to simplify all the repetitive tasks that they hate, right? And, and have their, you know, to have their job faster and more enjoyable. So that's why, why we really love this, uh, the MCP. Um, so this concludes um, this part of our presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, in, a, in the next uh, part, we will talk about Citera Data Intelligence, which I, which I think is even more exciting.